Hello my soccer universe. I'm gonna do this now a second time for the simple reason I shot this yesterday in the evening and it was more meandering and not focused video. So let's properly do it. What are my favorite brands? Well you have one at most two shirts from each of my favorite brands up there and I've been threatening to do a video like this for quite a while. I think I was really inspired, um, but then I wanted to keep even some distance when Dan from Club Football Shirts uh, gave his top 10 uh, big name brand shirts and then his top 10 small brand uh, shirts manufacturers. And I even wrote to him, yeah, I had this video in mind. Uh, you did it now. And he said, yeah, it would be very interesting to hear your opinion. And I had this ever since in mind, but I never really got to it. I wanted to keep a little bit of a distance as well to, you know, uh, now his video is not as fresh in my mind anymore, although I still know his number ones and so on. But also because uh, for me, I, although in my collection, I have at the moment 26 brands, 27, if you take the two different self-produced ones uh, in there, it's mostly the brands that you would expect. Um, but since I have this nice spreadsheet where I have my uh, shirts in there, I decided, well, uh, maybe it's really hard to do a ranking because you know, things change and I think uh, the numbers speak for, for, for itself, which brands do I like to buy? And so it is kind of a countdown of which uh, brands are most frequent in my collection. With a little caveat there uh, that it's not really number uh, top 10, but rather top 11 in a way, because I have three tied for, um, I guess, ninth spot. And one is only tied because there's still a jersey about to arrive. Uh, and yeah, there are... The other caveat is there are a few jerseys that are yet to arrive and if uh, I think I'm waiting for four at the moment I have 233 jerseys officially in my soccer jersey collection. Um, four more are arriving and two of which will change their standings uh, for top brand. However, I do not mind the way it is now because uh, it kind of reflects my overall feeling uh, quite well how I feel about this brand. So. Despite number two becoming number one soon again, I'm sure it will turn back uh, once the you know the next next season sales come. Although maybe not. So yeah, honorable mention. I have of this brand four shirts, four are club teams, no na national teams. These are the self-produced Lusk jerseys, which initially came under the imprint Forza ASK. Uh, means and then were under beat out the WT the first jersey that I got is this 1920 uh, European away jersey which I love a whole lot uh, I really like that they are quite uh, stretchy yes you can feel that they are maybe a little bit cheaper produced but they're always at a good price and they have some interesting designs uh, the problem is always with sponsors and and so on but there are some really nice ones that I got there, as I said, of those 2019, and it's just because Lask is at the moment self-producing, and I actually kinda like this a uh, little bit. The next brand is, I have at the moment still, one is coming, three shirts, three club shirts, and there's another club shirt coming, so that's why I put it on number 10, which is Lotto. My first Lotto shirt, is this Milan shirt uh, and I got the first Lotto shirt uh, this is 996 I got this in 98 where I got my first few Lotto shirts although I got a Milan jacket and some uh, suitcase and so on sooner I loved Lotto in the 90s there is nothing more that, that, that I can say about it. for me Lotto uh, especially in the 90s had some of the best shirts around this Milan shirt is actually kind of a boring one in that uh, way. Um, I really like the Dutch jerseys, the Croatia jerseys that they had. Um, who else did have Lotto? I think Switzerland even had some integral. Of course, we're talking about uh, some of great Fiorentina designs. Uh, 
there were some great Lotto jerseys. Lotto recently not so much, not so much my style. I mean, they and they're kind of a little bit vanishing in the background again. Uh, they lost me in the mid 2000s with their range for the 2006 World Cup. So yeah, number 10 kind of fits a little bit uh, in it. It's a brand that I was very fond of, but a little bit uh, lost, honestly, sight of it. Number nine is a brand that I don't think is around that much anymore in the soccer jersey world, which is Reebok. My first ever Reebok shirt is this wonderful last shirt and a similar story with Lotto. I loved Reebok stuff in, in the 90s, more than Nike stuff, mainly because, you know, they went, they really gave Lusk the first real um, uh, exposure. You could buy these jerseys relatively frequently. You still find these jerseys uh, if you look out for at a quite reasonable price uh, because they were really, this is the first mass production line uh, that Reebok had. Of course, they had the favor of the fa uh the famous, not fa favorite design with where the Reebok logo was kind of over the shoulders. I think Chile had that one even at the World Cup. And there were quite some interesting ones um, there. I also found it interesting. I think Reebok was present at the 94 World Cup, uh, which Nike was not. That to me is uh, kind of uh, shows a little bit. However, I have completely lost track of Reebok unless we are talking, of course, NFL jerseys, which they had the contract until the late 2000s and NHL jerseys, which they only recently lost because Re Reebok is not part of Adidas. Uh, I love my Reebok NHL jerseys. Uh, now, at number eight, we are coming to a true um, cult brand, I have to say. And we're talking, of course, of this brand, this brand which is Hummel. I have five shirts total of which three are club shirts and two are national team jerseys. The national team jerseys, you can guess, it's all Denmark, because for me Hummel is synonymous with the Denmark national team. However, the first jersey that, that I got is this very, very old, this is very recent. The first one I got this was in 2019, I think I got this Benfica 8990. Uh, this is the oldest shirt in my collection, not the, um, the, the longest one that I have, but it's the oldest shirt. And it shows you all the Hummel goodness with the chevrons here. Uh, really, really nice design. I have to say, Hummel is overall class. Uh, it's now, I have a few more recent jerseys, like the Red Out Denmark jersey. I have a Match Issue long sleeve Denmark one. I have a Freiburg jersey. I have an Everton long sleeve. They are all class jerseys. Very well done, very well produced. Um, they putting really good work in. I totally love Hummel. The only thing I have, have to say, their web store is kind of so and so. Um, you really have to go through the club stores, which is a little bit annoying to me. I uh, have been around for a long time. Many uh, hallowed uh, designs, especially for Denmark, but also in the 80s for other teams. Spurs, for instance, come to mind. And I think even modern classics. Uh, Hummel is absolute class. I love, I love me some Hummel. So this was at number eight. At number seven, we go to a Spanish brand, Homa. Seven jerseys I have for Homa. Five club teams, two national teams, which are of course all Bulgaria. My first Homa jersey was bought in 2003, which is this uh, Kievo shirt, which kind of represents my initial feeling about Homa. I always thought they're kind of a cheapish brand like Yako, uh, Ulsport, you know, all these and, and even some Italian brands like Legea, uh, all sub sublimated. However, I have to say this jersey has grown me, although the team doesn't really exist anymore. I hope they find a new way. I have to say Homa improved in my standing a lot over the past five years. And this is mainly due to the awesome job they're doing with European, Eastern European national teams. Uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, especially the Bulgaria jersey they have released, there's almost no dot in there. They are really well done and they take a lot of cultural stuff in there. Even their club jerseys uh, that I have, uh, the newer ones, I have Atalanta, I have Levski, I have Torino, I have Villarreal. They're really well done. The one thing um, with them is, I mean, uh, there's always some kind of reference to the city. I really like their, um, you know, on the tail, on the inside, they have a little band with the club name ru running around. Uh, they are light 
very well crafted jurors, jurors. There's really nothing bad I can say about them. Uh, the one thing that I dislike is you need to size up with them. But Homa is a brand that really, really uh, is taking another level to, to me and this has really improved in my standing. Uh, when I look at Homer jerseys from the 2010s or, or so, I'm not so fond of them, but the more recent creations, really, really uh, nice stuff in there. So this was Homer at number seven. At number six, now we go to, I don't want to say a big brand, but one of another cult brand uh, that has been around for a long time, Italian brand. We talk, of course, Kappa. I have 10 Kappa shirts, eight are club teams and two are national teams. Um, the first couple jersey was a national, a national team and this was already um, this the combat couple jersey. This is a 2002 Italy shirt in double XL. Yes, you also need to size up for Kappa uh, if you get combat um, skin jer uh, jerseys. What I like about Kappa is um, I really love their all uh, their 90 stuff. There are some really great shirts out there and I only have a 91, 92 Yuba shirt, which I love. I told, I, I told, I told love they, um, most of the Yuba stuff they put out, there's one of my uh, grails, the, you know, the Champions League winning Juventus shirt is also in there. Uh, I also liked what they did in 98 with the floppy collar, the Jamaica jer uh, jersey for, for instance, was one that I really, really enjoyed. However, in the 2000s, Kappa was ahead of its time with the tight-fitting shirts. Uh, they were a little bit of a, an outrage at the moment because you suddenly had the seams on the outside and, and so I have to say the Italy jer uh, jer jersey, I was not a fan of the color. I liked the deeper blue for Italy. However, they stood the test of time and now uh, tight jerseys are the norm. So Kappa for that deserves a lot of credit. Uh, two other things that I really like, like about Kappa. Yes, if you get these, size up. I mean, you might, might, might even double size, size up. Um, however, they also produce now um, looser fitting versions. Uh, the Mines shirt that I got recently and of course the Betis shirt are all regular fit. So if you see re regular fit, you can choose your, no your, your normal size and they are relatively inexpensive. They're usually half price of what the normal shirt is which big credit to Kappa. These are probably the cheapest brand jerseys out there. Uh, also, the web store offers free shipping, which is something I still have yet to exploit, but I am very, 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 very close to doing so. And if I go on kappa.com, I only can get the Italian teams. Uh, it's a little bit weird with the pricing. Fiorentina shirts, those uh, regular fit, even the brand new ones you can get for 40 euros with free shipping on top of it. Uh, at least to Austria. Um, uh, Genoa is a little bit more expensive, so I don't know what's happening there. I know that for Napoli they had a similar price uh, difference, kind of. So yeah, there is a little bit back and forth that has to be said. Um, but Kappa do good things. I generally, I'm always happy if I can add another Kappa shirt, to be honest. Uh, so I do like Kappa quite some. Um, I like the current Fiorentina shirt, for instance. Sometimes they're a little bit too template heavy, uh, sometimes a little bit too plain, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And you know, if you get such a beauty, you cannot go wrong. So Kappa is number six. Number five is probably my most favorite uh, recent brand. And this is so recent that the first jersey I bought of theirs was in 2019. I bought three, but I think the first one that I chose was this last last shirt. We're talking Macron. Of Macron, I have currently already 14 shirts. Uh, and these were all, and the first one I got was late 2019. So I'm really, really happy with Macron overall. The one thing when I bought my first one, I did not know is stretchy, tight fitting, even the regular versions. So Macron, size up. You might even double size up like, like this power shirt, which is a triple XL. I usually wear XL um, because it is really, um, you get a long shirt, but it, it kind of fits loosely then. What I absolutely, absolutely love about Macron, especially their recent work, is that they put so much effort even for smaller teams. You saw my Gillingham shirt. Uh, it's very plain and basic, but they still put 
uh, a little accent with the horse in there, which is something that Adidas, for instance, would never do. Absolutely love Macron for that. They arrange for the smaller national teams, and probably I have to show you another shirt, which is, of course, the Liechtenstein uh, jersey. They got the contract for the refs of UEFA and for the smaller uh, teams, and they're doing an amazing job. Do you see the crown uh, being dubbed uh, the double up, and then the uh, Vaduz Castle print on the bottom? Adidas never did anything like, uh, like it. Mama Macron makes it outstanding. Every team has a custom design. They're doing absolutely amazing stuff. I love me some Macron. The only thing I do not like about Macron is that on their website, their jerseys rarely ever go for sale. And when they go to go to sale, it's only when there are uh, impossible sizes available. And uh, their shipping is rather expensive. So you need to go through the club store and wait until the prices drop or you get them for you know from other sites. That's the only downside with Macron. Um, I even got, meanwhile, some of the older shirts, like uh, 13 and 14. They are not as tight-fitting, but they're also quite, quite, quite nice. But uh, the recent shirts, Macron, although I think they were at their height um, up until 2009, they still produce very nice stuff. But uh, they have now this temp temp template with, with the slivers where they're kind of losing me a little bit. But other than that, you cannot really go wrong with Macron. Um, at this moment, I would say, at this very moment, uh, quality of what you get and what is produced and the work that goes into it, I would actually put Macron there at least second favorite. Overall in my collection, they are only sitting at number five at the moment, but they are quickly overtaking everyone. We are entering the top four at uh, number four. An absolute classic brand where I have 21 jerseys of 14 clubs and seven national teams and we're talking of course umbro uh to me when i grew up as a fan it was clear to me umbro this is the serious brand umbro they had the reputation those are the best jerseys they make the highest qual quality jersey the first umbro shirt is of course this ajax shirt which honestly uh compared to the brazil shirt here which probably should by all right have been my first jersey um is not as good in quality because everything is sublimated but it's actually very well done and what i like is the high vent ve ventilation but material wise this is not so different from the milan shirt uh from lotto i have to say still stitched logo uh very very nice umbro is a brand that i have high respect for uh that most of the stuff i really really like also, typical 2000 style, they got a little bit too slivery and too weird temp temples, but exactly in that time they produced Lusk and they got some great Lusk jer uh, jerseys out there, some of which are still my fav my, my favorites. Um, when I look over what I have, I have it really from the 90s, 2000s, uh, 2010s. It's a very um, consistent brand, of course. Tailored by Umbro is probably my favorite period of theirs. Uh, I have an England shirt, I have a man city shirt and i think i have a wales shirt uh where they really did good stuff then one of the saddest day for me as a collector was when england went to nike fortunately nike came out with a great first shirt but ever since i have to say england jerseys by nike are rather hit or miss um i miss the umbro shirts uh similar actually for sweden so yeah, uh, Umbro is a brand that I hold still in high esteem. I know they're not of the, for me in the nineties, they were one of the big players. If you want to have a real soccer shirt, it was, you have to get Umbro. No, we are not there uh, anymore, but Umbro still produces quality, quality stuff. We're into the top three. And if you check down, I mean, uh, it's the big three for me, although there's an arg argument that's the, there's a little bit of step. Now, um, of number three, this is of course Puma, where I have almost twice as many as I have Umbro shirts. Puma, I have 40 shirts, 28 country, which is the anomaly. I usually have more club shirts than, uh, than uh, national team shirts. But Puma, 28 national teams and only 12 club teams. However, the first shirt that I got is a club team, which is a Lusk shirt. I hated it when it came out. But then we made it to the final, so I uh, meanwhile I love it. Uh, and yeah, it's a pretty nice shirt. 
my Puma collection is of course carried by Austrian national team shirts and Italian national team shirts of which I have I think six each um, for Puma this is one of the most inconsistent brands in there what I have to give great credit for Puma they always try something different and what I also like is uh, this is especially for more recent jerseys even for, for, for the replicas when I get a Puma shirt I always feel they are, they are lighter than the rest there is something about them, they always feel light. Adidas is getting there a little bit, but Puma, uh, I really like them. They're always very comfortable to wear. They're made for comfort. The look, <laughs> they did well with the first few Milan shirts. Now they're getting a little bit wacky. They have great ideas, like the crafted by culture style. Uh, they were always a little bit forward looking with the, you know, the West George or Joseph Cameroon. My favorite Puma period is probably the European national team shirts for Euro 2008. Although they looked rather plain, I think they had something very special with the crest that's kind of a little bit shiny. And then the away jerseys had kind of the floppy collar with the flag insert there, which was a really, really nice touch. And then, of course, the Africa 2010 range is still one of my favorite ranges out there. Closely followed by the Craft by Culture, although this was also hit and miss. So Puma, to me, uh, you have your waves. You have waves where you absolutely want to love and hug Puma. And then there are waves where they completely mess it up. Okay, we are at the top two. And as I said, they are very, very neck on neck. However, uh, number two is... Adidas. At this very moment, I have 51 Adidas shirts, and I told you two are, two are about to be added. Um, I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts that I currently wear, which is this long sleeve um, Milan 11 12 shirt. Adidas is a brand where, uh, yeah, we have to say a lot of things. My first Adidas shirt was my second ever, it's this Milan jersey uh, from 1991. Uh, which is kind of the basic conf car configuration of that time. Really, really nice shirt. I love this one to pieces. It's still my favorite Milan shirt. Uh, overall, uh, closely followed by this one. Oh, how, nah, this one. Adidas in the 90s I, is my favorite brand. They lost it at the 2002 World Cup for me when they started with the weird ventilation patches. Then uh, all this design that had slivers and kind of weird shaped lines. There is where Adidas lost it. For me, the big allure was is when they had like this, uh, the Adidas equipment range with the bold three stripes across the shoulder and then they had it on the bottom. Then they had in 996 the one that went uh, like race car stripes on both sides. I love this shirt. They hit a particular peak where they, okay, we reduce the branding, but we go now more. We have the three stripes again uh, on the shoulders. They hit a peak for me in the late 90s with the styles that we have here. There are some of my favorite shirts in there. This Milan third shirt is a favorite, closely followed by the France 98 home. I love the Argentina away jersey from that time. The Real Madrid jersey, there is some of, these are some of my most cherished jerseys out there. Adidas in the 90s is probably of any period. This is my favorite. However, they lost the plot to me. Uh, Adidas in the 2000s, very hit and miss. Uh, they redeemed themselves in 2010 when they put out probably the two best jerseys of the World Cup with the uh, Spain and France away jerseys. Uh, and I have to say those were not all that bad. Uh, and then at the moment they try retro, but they don't do it right in my opinion. So it is a mess. Well, I can do a full video and probably I will do a video on how I think that Adidas has declined, declined over the years. Um, they still can pull out some really, really nice shirts. Uh, like the last season Ajax away. Sometimes they make complete hits. But overall, for me, Adidas is losing a lot of respect. In many ways and i think I, I will have to make another video on that we're at number one and you can guess it it is with 52 jerseys 23 of which are national team jerseys 29 of which are uh, club jerseys it is of course nike um and i have to say all the respect that adidas lost nike gained in my opinion i have to say of the big manufacturers Nike is currently my favorite. My first Nike jersey 
Actually, not the first one that I bought, but the first one I bought for myself is this PSG jersey, uh, 98-99. Uh, the away jersey, bought it at the Champs Elysees. I think four days earlier, I bought the Barcelona Centenaire shirt as a gift for my brother. Fortunately, he still has it. He even got a Clivert print on it. So, um, Nike, kind of our late bloomers. Uh, I r still don't understand how Nike did not have any team at the 94 World Cup. Nike had a period where I didn't wasn't really so fond of them, especially how they aggressively snatched up all my favorite national teams uh, like the Netherlands and Italy and then and Brazil and so on. And then even with Brazil, they even matched uh, messed a little bit with the classic look, although Ambro, to be honest, did it too. I, I gotta say, Nike has really done well. They are rebrand of the Netherlands and France with the kind of Ulster looking crests, marvelous. Um, even their recent templates. Yes, 2016, that was a step too far, but they learned, they learned from it. Uh, got a lot more classic looking jerseys out there um, and as of late released some really, really great shirts. That Roma shirt here is one of my recent classics. Yes, they're about to lose it again with their <laughs> weird third and you know with the air max range and so for me they're about to lose it again a little bit but they have done a lot of great work uh, and what nike is also very good uh, at and you can see this with barbara so one traditional look one kind of a little different shirt one traditional look one kind of a little bit uh traditional look and what i totally love with theirs is that they very reliably Put their old kits on the website on sale and then if you sign up for them you get not only free shipping but you also get sometimes uh, even more discounts so it's very easy to pick up nike shirts and i have to also say ever since the 2016 range the one thing i like about them is their kind of silky feel when you wear them yes it's not maybe made made for sports for that you of course get the weight on it and all those kind, kind of stuff but they feel sturdy um well crafted you're not feeling a little bit cheated with the overlook so therefore i think nike at the moment i don't like all the stuff that they're producing but i think at the moment i have to say nike is my favorite uh manufacturer of soccer jerseys macron at this very moment macron second overall um yeah what Adidas, the legacy that Adidas built in the 80s and the 90s uh, is still very, 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 very strong. But as of late, yeah, I am a little bit down on Adidas, as you can also see in my jersey reviews. In any case, I want to know your favorite manufacturers. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day.